Praise be to thy name, Lord God, our Father, for the favor that we have enjoyed since the break of the day. As Lord, we come at the end of our sessions, we want to pray for special blessings again, in Jesus' name, amen. Praise the name of the Lord, saints. Amen. Praise the Lord again. Amen. Yeah, we want to give glory to our Father for yeah. this far that he has brought us. And indeed, we are here to testify that he is our Ebenezer. Amen. 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 Uh, asante ni sana uh, wana youth wetu. Wame tukumbusha ya kwamba. Tukifika pale juu, tutashangilia pamoja na watakatifu, pamoja na malaika. Na ukumbuka ya kwamba biblia pia utuambia kwamba. Hapo wakati tukifika kuimba wimbo wa ushindi wa Musa na mwana kondoo. Hata malaika watakunja mabawa wakishangilia hawa ni wakina nani na wametoka wapi. Amen. Kwa sababu hawakujua mateso ambao tulipitia hapa ulimwenguni tukipambana na dambi na shetani na wadui tupaka tupate ushindi. Bwana sifiwe. Amen. Yeah, that is our joy mm -hmm. as we journey through this world. So we want to take this time to welcome all of us to this time program. The Lord has seen us through from morning and we want to take this time to welcome everyone. I know there are some of us who are not here in the morning and they found the opportunity to be here this afternoon. I want to say welcome and uh, may you feel that you're in the right place and may you feel that the Lord is ready to speak to your soul. Let me take this time also. I know we came here to celebrate with our friends, our workmates, our neighbors. If they are... Uh, our friends who have visited with us are, uh, and is not part of our members of the SDA church around here, any, from any other churches around who found opportunity to come that we celebrate together with the Lord. Any member of any other church that is not SDA? Aha, kuna mkono kule nyuma. Inje, nione kama kuna mkono. Uh -huh. Ndugu nasema umekaribishwa sana Kwa unyenyekevu sana na kuomba Usalimie umati Tukisikia ya kuomba tumekukaribisha Huko nyuma Tafadhali simamo tusalimie Karibu sana Bwana sifiwe Na ufi, ujisikia ya kuomba huko nyumbani So uh, the choir we welcome you The technical team, the choristers We want to say thank you so much For taking your time to be here so uh, coming up front here, we've been blessed the whole day. Our sister has blessed us with uh, several from different sessions. Sister, thank you so much. Say hi to the church this evening. Hi, church. Hi. Thank you. Uh, we have our brother also has uh, blessed us so much with teachings, different teachings from the Bible. and. Uh, I, I believe that when they go back, you will remember all that the Lord gave to them to bring to us. He has told us something that uh, I, will, I, will, I will mention it when we finish. Brother, <laughs> say, say, say hi to the church this evening. Yeah, uh, Brother... Bernard. Bernard. Meskia <laughs> kwe. Ah, yeah. Kamu meskia nisao. Thank you so much. Yes, uh, brother. Uh, Bina, I always find it very, <laughs> but I will ask you what it means. Yes. <laughs> now I have our own elder, Brother Eric Adamba, who has been doing us good in translation. And I want to pray that the Holy Spirit is still going to use him even as we continue with this program. Elder Eric. I hope everyone has waved back. And uh, I am still Mrs. Wokiri. <laughs> Mrs. Wokiri, I believe you're somewhere at the back. Uh, Mr. Oh, oh. I and your wool and a wave. Amen. 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 Yeah. When he's there, I feel protected. Amen. Thank you so much. So, together with me, we want to humbly take this time to welcome. The man of God, when his time will come, then the Lord will use him as you pray for him. 
that uh, he will speak to us. But before I welcome, or before I ask who, welcome, who together with me help me to welcome him, may I give this time to, I saw pastor seated somewhere. He walked out. He has walked out. Uh, I know him, he can speak any moment. So together with me, how many of us welcome pastor? Thank you so much, and uh, may we feel free at the feet of Jesus as we enjoy to hear the messages from him in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Elder Wokiri. We want to do our theme song. But Elder, before we do the theme song, Elder Wokiri, I know of a friend of Ben Mucha who also happens to be a very good friend of mine, but he's a very shy guy. He's one person who will never stand when visitors are invited to stand. But I know he's not a member of this church. He's a member of Karangete Church. Ben, do you know that Engineer Felix is behind you there? Samuel Felix Adoyo. Engineer Ebusi Mama. I know he's a member of Karangete Church. Engineer Karibu. Thank you so much. Our choristers, please take us to our theme song of the camp meeting. God is good all the time. Let us all rise. I just want to sing the song in Kiswahili version today. Roho Mtakatifu. Tuweze kwa muka sote kwa ajili ya wimbo. Roho Mtakatifu in Kiswahili. Thank you.
kupata nafasi ili tuombe Mungu wetu aishie mali patakatifu Yesu Kristo kiongozi na mkombozi wetu Roho mtakatifu kiongozi amini rafiki na mpendwa na mwalimu wetu tuakuinua jina tuakusifu tunakuabudu kwa sababu unastahili sifa zetu tunakushukuru baba kwa wema wako kwa utukufu wako na kwa yale yote ambayo umeweza kutenda katika maisha yetu hasa kutuma mwana wako aje kifo cha aibu msalabani ili tupate kuokolewa Baba tunakushukuru. Tunakushukuru ya kwamba sisi ambao tumejipata katika dhambi unatuita mara kwa mara tijoni kwangu mliolemewa na mizigo ya dhambi nitawapumzisha. Jehova Mungu wetu tumekuja jioni ya leo. Ni ukweli ya kwamba mizigo ya dhambi imetulemea kiasi cha kwamba mara nyingi tunapoteza mwelekeo lakini Jehova Mungu wetu we ni mwaminifu twakushukuru kwa mwaliko wako Jehova Asante kwa kutuandalia makambi haya kwa kutumbusha ya kwamba bado unatujali Asante kwa kutukutumbusha ya kwamba bado wewe ni Mungu wetu bado sisi ni watoto wako Jehova tunakushukuru sana Baba ni siku nyingine umekuja ili unene nasi umenena nasi katika masiku yale yale pita hata leo kuanzia asubuhi baba tunao tumeona utukufu wako tumesikia sauti yako ya upole baba hata jioni ya leo tunatarajia kusikia sauti yako tena tumejikabidi katika mkono wako Mungu wetu ya kwamba tukiwa na yale yote ambao inaweza kuzuia maombi yetu yasikufikie mm. baba tunaomba ya kwamba utusafishe na utusamee dhambi zetu katika mkono wako baba tunayakabidhi tunamkabidhi mtumishi wako ambao katika mpango wako wa kipekee ulimtuma na umemtakaza Jehova hata neno lako umeyaweka katika midomo yako kinywani midomo yake katika kinywani yake baba wakati atakaposimama baba ili anene neno lako Jehova Ebu upate roho wako upate kumguza kama vile ulimguza mtumishi wako Isaia mpaka kaona utukufu wako. Jehova jioni nyingine tena tunatamani tusikie hiyo roho yako, tunatamani tusikie hiyo sauti yako ya upole na ya upendo kwa sababu ni hapo peke yake tunapata tumaini. Jina lako liendelee kupata sifa katika mambo yote tutakapofika tamati wa vipindi vyetu vya leo tutasema ni utukufu na neema imerudishiwa katika Mungu wetu tunaomba haya yote kupitia jina la Yesu Kristo aliye ni mkombozi wetu. Amen. Amen. Good news someone is. Jesus gave his life a ransom, gave it on Calvary, on Mount Calvary, cruel Calvary, paved the way by blood that we might win a bright shining crown. Praise his holy name. Salvation has been brought down, oh glory. Praise the Lord. Salvation has been brought down. Go and shout in shout, shout in tell it to the world around. Tell it to 
tomorrow is the world of good that we might be a shining power when they are lost for us no salvation is full and Spread the news, spread the news all over the land and see your people. Tell it off for him, every nation. Tell it off for all of the people. Show prayer of the Lord. Salvation has been brought down. All alone without a friend, he suffered to pay it all. Yes, he paid it all. Jesus paid it all. In his blessed promises, sweet victory can be found. Praise his God, he will hear it. Salvation has been brought down for glory. Prayer is the Lord. Salvation has been brought down. Heaven, go and shout and shout and shout and tell it to the wild around. Tell it to the two people in sorrow. Tell it to the and tell it tomorrow. Preach the word of God that we might be a shining God. Salvation is full and free to heal us, spread our hands and peace and news all over the land and see your people. Tell it out for you, every nation, tell it out for all of the creation. Pray as the Lord of salvation has been brought down. Pray as the Lord of salvation has been brought down. Heaven, go and shout and shout and shout and tell it to the world around. Tell it to the two people in sorrow. Tell it to the and tell it to We continue in our growth in him and still in the book of Colossians. But this evening we are considering verse number 15 to verse number 20. Colossians 1 verse number 15 to verse number 20. And I want to read in your hearing in my translation. You can follow with your translation. Teach Christo koduongne. Christo eki domine no marnya sai mokne. En giduong maruo i makayo kene gi loch kum chwech duto. Nikech kuome emene nya sai ochwe gik moko duto manie polo kene manie pein. Ok mana gik mine no kende to koda gik mokne bende. Kaka loch giduong giruodi kod teko. Mago du tonya sai no chweyo kum Kristo kendo ni Kristo. Paragabirio, Kristo ne nitie kane poko chwe gik moko duto kendo ne en en ema gik moko duto oriwore kuome. En ewi kanyakla mar jo Kristo kendo kanyakla mar jo Kristo eringre. En mane ochako kanyakla mar jo Kristo kendo en ema okongo O kongo chero, o akum jomo oto, mi obedo jatelo kum gik moko duto. Our closing in verse number 19. Ni ketnya sayo uwon, emane o yero, mwondo en uwon, o dago kum kristo, gikite duto. Together with me, how many join me in welcoming the servant of God to expand on this? Pastor Karibu. Praise the good Lord. Amen. The Lord is good. All the time. And all the time. 
Lord is good and that is his nature. We want to thank his name because of his grace and mercy. He has led us since morning and up to this moment. This is a lofty text. And I have to acknowledge even before I preach it that I will not preach the depth of it. And it has been a great agony for me because it's not a text to be preached. It's a text to be sung. It's a hymn. It's a poem. As many Bible students have agreed that is supposed to be given to the Lord Jesus. But it's necessary for us to come to this place because we may leave this place thinking that all spiritual growth has to do with us. And that's why Paul comes to this place so that he can establish the Colossians on the very true foundation of their true spiritual growth. And therefore, I'm not going to make any other introductory issues because I know the weight of the place I'm moving into. So allow me to go straight to the text this evening without preliminaries. Let's pray and then I'll read the text. Again. Lord our Father in heaven, the revelation of your Son to us will be our study in eternity. That even to now, Lord, in this specified time, I know that, Lord, we will only touch the surface. But yet I pray that the revealed glory will bring great impact on our lives that we shall see and desire we shall see and our hearts will be warmed we shall see and feel the burning within us because of him who is so lovely jesus christ in whose name we pray amen, amen. the firstborn of every creature for by him were all, were all things created that are in heaven that are in earth visible and invisible whether they be thrones or dominion or principalities or powers all things were created by him and for him and he is above all things. And by him all things consist. And he is the head of the body of the body, the church. Who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead. That in all things he might have the preeminence. For it pleased the Father that in him should all fullness dwell. Amen. Amen. That is the word of God. The title of our message today is the supremacy and sufficiency of our growth. The, uh, the supremacy and sufficiency of our growth. Children of God, growth is the driving force in our society today. We all find that in every place you turn to, people are, people are talking of advancement. Institutions are talking of growth. Our own individual lives, we are talking of how we can grow ourselves. We as people in the underworld, we are all being pushed through industrial growth. 
just like the first world at the national level there is that collective call watch like in our country now we are being overtaxed because we are being told that we want to boost our economy so at the government level we are told that we are growing and we are told that we need to get more money to grow with the new programs that we need to support the government is subjecting us to unlimited tax consequences in our educational systems we are also being called to grow despite the fact that they are telling us for free education but it is true that there is no free education. The strategies that are being laid out for colleges and universities, public and private, all that you realize are high tuition fees because it's the idea that growth. We are growing. Churches, we are not left behind. It's not a coincidence that even as a church today, the language is growth. We are being told that we should grow. And the more we bring more people to church and give good reports of people who have come, then we, are, then we are growing. So it is pointed that a healthy church is a bigger church. If we are a small church, we are not growing. Who can deny the phenomenon that growth is the language in the society today? No wonder we are gathered here calling ourselves to grow in Christ. The, the drive to grow is not limited to national government. It's not limited to institutions. It's not to churches. But even in our own personal life, if you go to a bookstore today and find the best-selling books, you'll hear books like Think and Grow Rich. You'll find books that are selling are achieving the competitive age. You'll find books like uh, Go Beyond Your Limits. Self-help groups, self-help books are the best-selling books. All it's because human beings are seeking personal growth. We want to grow. All this emphasis upon growth, children of God, may not be very innocent. Because when growth is growth for the sake of itself, the driving force behind it becomes an excess. The scene of self-interest to grow makes us a culprit either to misuse or to abuse or to confuse the gifts of God. So we are calling ourselves to grow but unfortunately it could be found that the most is self. It's about us. And in that manner, we forget the Lord's desire that our growth is for stewardship, is for disposition, is for deployment, is for use, not abuse, or misuse, or confuse. The resources upon which God is extending to all of us that is entrusting us are not intended for our own self-interest but for deployment for the growth of all creation. Hallelujah, children of God. Amen. So the entrusted things to us, be it material or spiritual, in the sense even of spiritual gifts, if they are not deployed, they are abused or misused or confused. Even as a pastor, the gift of pastoral, if 
nicht. As it's not deployed and used for my own glory, then it is abused. God is gifting us, yes, to grow, but not to grow for ourselves, it's to grow for his glory and for the peace of all mankind. Children of God, in this context, spiritual growth, even as spiritual as it may be, may have a secular motive, which is essentially self-actualization. Just like all other things that we pursue in life for self-actualization so that we find ourselves valuable, it's possible that we can strive for spiritual growth for self-actualization that spiritual life in fact it has been placed by psychologists on top of the on top of uh, the triangle of the self-actualization no wonder many of our preaching today has has taken from developmental psychology so that we preach in a manner in which we are telling you or we are telling ourselves to discover yourself for the sake of self-growth. So no object of self-actualization or self-realization whether it's spiritual or secular can really uh, reach the ultimate of God. These terms of self, self-actualization, self-realization, and we could even add self-spiritual growth. All these things betray the, uh, betray the objectives of God. Critically, people of God, if you look at the preaching today, which seems to draw our attention much, it is sort of an, a therapy. It's not biblical teaching. What appeals to us today is everything that makes us feel better. Things that give us certain kind of positive perspective. It's not that the Lord doesn't want you to have that same perspective. But when it becomes the end, then it could be in, it could be a problem. The kind of preaching that we hear today of many people who are not in church is about self-interest. Believe in God and God is going to bless you. Believe in God and you are going to be successful. You become the center of the message of God. But children of God, all these things cannot be the place where God wants you to, to build your, your foundation. One author called Oswald Chambers says this way, uh, any form of self-actualization as the goal of growth is the rejection of the, go of the growth of a Christian. Time and time again, he identifies that any kind of conscious self-effort to do God's will, to be in his service, to strive to be holy, all I diversions from the single purpose of God of self-surrender in order to be in the presence and to glorify his name. Spiritual growth then is not a goal towards which Christian must strive to reach. The nature of spiritual growth is the union with Jesus Christ. Is to see that the giftings of God bring us closer
Moza so that we might be one with his son. That is the ultimate of our growth that we find union with Jesus Christ. We are living in times when growth is, mo is motivated by meats like that the bigger is the better. So when you have the big one, you are better. And therefore, all of us want the big one. Even spiritual gifts, we want the big one. While the Bible tells us that there are several spiritual gifts, but you want the big ones. The ones that put us on the pedestal. And therefore, if you are not having that one, it seems like you have not grown spiritually. We are living in times where growth is motivated by whatever you can do. You must do. And in that manner, we have undertaken spiritual enterprises with, that with the secular mind that we have to do it without consecrating ourselves. We are living in times when we are told that the human mind is unlimited. You can expand it. And that way, intellectual greatness is what we have glorified even in the church is how many verses as much as it is good that is what we are defining ourselves in spiritual growth we are living in time children of God when we are being told if you have grown you have plenty that power increases with plenty so it doesn't matter how you get the plenty because that is what gives you power you get it because that is what power is and that is what growth is we are living in time when we are told if you are growing get more and more get more and more so when we are told to give we feel that we may be dwarfing ourselves while the gospel tells us it's only unless we deny ourselves that we grow. We are living in times that even spiritual growth, children of God, can be self actualization. And the evil of this tendency is what we can see. We are worshiping wealth. We are arrogant in our intellect. We are all caught up in the greed of getting. We are all caught up in the goal of self-actualization. We, we have been seduced by the secular society. Even in the church, all these ills have caught up with us. Big is better. Human minds are limited. Power is by plenty. Getting is greater than giving. Children of God, this is not strange. The letter of Colossae Paul is writing to a church that is threatened by a heresy. While the, while the text does not tell us what kind of heresy it is, but there were mixed teaching that were coming to the people. Because the people that Paul was speaking to had been told that Jesus is prominent here. But he's not the prime. He's not the supreme. And he's not sufficient. You need something extra. That was the teaching, the philosophy that the Colossae had had. That yes, Jesus is okay. But you need something else to be sufficient. Child of God, when we accept Jesus Christ, Jesus must be Lord over yes, all. As we hear now Paul exalting him, the temptation in our modern society, like it was with the Colossians, 
they were being told you have to be creative you have to be novel new in things in the way you think you cannot just hold on Jesus you need other things so they were, they were seeking for new things no wonder today Jesus is not enough we want other things we are quick to get the new one we are quick to be drawn to new ones Jesus is not sufficient we want something extra we want some new story something that is new something creative our evangelism today we are told that we need to be creative Jesus does not seem to be enough this was the kind of heresy in the Colin Colossae where they needed new things where the new things were for the sake of it when we talk about newness one of the things that is exalted in that sense is self and the creativity what people are being drawn to. So you know what that means, child of God? When we are drawn to people who are innovative, again this is not to mean that we are not to be innovative it's that when we make this the end of our lives then Jesus is not sufficient then Jesus is not free but when we are drawn to creativity one of the things that happens with creativity is you fall into the temptation of being controlled if you are not the creator then you are the controlled if you are not the creator then you are controlled by the creator no wonder today in many religious meetings when men of God like me and come to people and, and with creative ways telling them of how God is speaking to them in a, in, in, in a more in a more explicit manner many people go there and they end up being controlled and they, they neglect the mind that God has gifted them to use so control is the pivot of our society today. So the trajectory of newness in the marketplace today is aimed to be controlled. And I want you to look even at your national government. While they tell you that they are bringing new innovative ways, it means they are the creator. And now you become the creature. And you are controlled. And you become the consumer and as you become the consumer you become dependent on them and you know what happens competition comes in and it becomes the context of will people of God I want to tell you that the false teaching in Colossae began in the minds of the people and therefore Paul wants to clarify about Paul wants to clarify about the majesty on the high exalted Jesus. And that's why you hear the reason. The issues of creator. You hear the issues of him being the firstborn. You hear Paul saying all that is there about Jesus because Paul wants to heal the disease of the mind in Colossae child of God I know you are here but probably you are bowing down to something else because you have been caught captive and you are controlled by that which you consider to be normal therefore in this paragraph in which we want to see in this brief moment Paul is celebrating Jesus Christ because of him as the creator 
and him as the head of all things. You know, all the prayers that he has given are based on this particular song. Is based on this one. You know, unfortunately, people of God, as I said, this, these verses here are for singers. I wish that my choirs could sing a song where we glorify Jesus. The language of adoration is so rich in this text. We have lost that language because God has remained a subject of study. You know, people of God, everything we read in the Bible is a product of worship. It's, it's, it's people who had been caught up in the presence of God and were, were, were consumed by, by, by the greatness of God began to write and they couldn't understand but they were, in, they were enabled by the spirit to write that which was beyond their minds worship is the beginning of all things worship is the beginning even of spiritual growth the child of God must first of all behold and desire. You have behold and desire. That is the worship. God must first be attractive so that you can grow in him. God is not an enterprise that brings self-actualization. God is one that first must fill you. You, you must come to the place like the psalmist say, oh, come and see how good the Lord is. Come and test how God is good. It's only at that point that the child of God begins to grow. It doesn't matter what the preacher is saying. If the child of God is not attractive, if your heart is not warm, if your heart doesn't see him to be loved, then there will be no spiritual growth. It will only remain a self actualization. It will be just a study and it will have no impact. And that's the reason when we enter verse 15 to 20, we see Jesus. What does Jesus have for us? You know, somebody may ask a young child asks the father if Jesus would be around today would he, would he be able to operate a computer you know at times the question the, the question of this young baby may look not of any you know doesn't have any meaning but I look at it and I say yes the manner in which I relate to Jesus sometimes it's like I am saying Jesus you don't understand you don't understand the power and the wisdom of our time we are of great wisdom. We have cloned animals. We have genetic plants and animals. What does Jesus have to offer? Children of God, as we read these verses, we realize Jesus has a lot to offer even in a highly technical world that we live in. Paul is a farming that only in Jesus, only in Jesus does everything exist. And only only in Jesus that all things hold together. If Jesus is not in the people, then there is nothing that holds together. And that's why he begins by saying, listen to now what we are saying. Verse 15, he says, who 
That is Jesus. That is Jesus. Yes. Because he's building on verse 13. The kingdom of the dear son. So he says, who is the image of the invisible God? The firstborn of every creature. This is Jesus. Paul is establishing that on all the things he has praised them that God has done in their lives. Now he's telling them that the real foundation is Jesus. Is Jesus. Yes. And the first thing he tells them, he is the creator. Jesus is the creator of all things. In a sense, Jesus, uh, Paul is saying, being the image of God, the icon of God, it means that he's the representative and also the manifestation of God. An image means that it's the express expression of God. Now Paul uses this to tell us that Jesus is also the beginning of all things. He is the creator. That's what he describes in verse 16. He's, after telling us, giving us the image of Jesus, he says the image of the invisible God, the firstborn, of every creature. Now he moves to verse 16 having said that he's the invisible God and he says by him all things created that are in heaven are in earth visible, invisible whether they be thrones or principalities or power all things were created by him and for him. Jesus answers two questions of yes, our life. Jesus answers yes, where you came from. Whatever new thing that you could be you, you, you could be given, Jesus is yes. everything. And He's the creator. He's the beginning. He's the alpha. He's the one by whom the Bible says that by his word he created all things. John would say in 1 John chapter 1 in the beginning was the word and the word was with God. And he goes to verse 18 and say the word, verse 14 he says the word became flesh speaking about Jesus Christ. A similar statement he said when Paul was going on his road to Damascus and he met Jesus then Jesus told him why are you persecuting me? Then Paul asked who are you Lord? Who are you Lord? Paul recognized that he had encountered the Lord who is Jesus who reigns over all things. The Bible tells us no one has seen God except the one who has come out of the bosom of God. That is Jesus Christ. That is Jesus Christ. He's the image of God. He is the one of children of God. The God who created the world from the beginning is the same God who has manifested himself in the person of Jesus Christ. He is the express image of God himself. But what does it mean to us? What does it mean to us? In a society where all things are new, and are drawing your attention and are exciting your heart. The Bible comes to tell you that Jesus is the source of your life. It is of Jesus that you live. As we begin to think about our growth, we want to know that we begin in Him. In Him we start. And you know what? The Bible says He creates us for 
his own pleasure. Listen to verse 16, the latter part. Colossians 1.16. See what he says in the latter part. He says, all things were, were created by him and the last one for him. You are created not for yourself, not for anyone, but for Jesus. And let me tell you, child of God, if anything is made and does not fulfill its purpose, then that thing is a tragedy. Is a tragedy. If you don't find your purpose in Jesus, then you are a tragedy. So the Bible tells us you have your source. In, in Jesus Christ. Hallelujah, children of God. Amen. So in our spiritual growth, we, we are being told Jesus is the creator. The second part of it, in verse 15 says that he is the firstborn. He is the firstborn. Our, I remember Sister Lauren Saturday asked this question. Here is, it is again. Essentially, as we said on Sabbath, firstborn has to do with priority. It has to do with priority. It has to do with sovereignty. It is all about who reigns. And therefore Jesus as the firstborn. I know this has remained to be something people have spoken about. But what I want you to get. As the firstborn. Is one who is of God highly favored. As God spoke about Israel. And in that manner he speaks about Jesus. Jesus as his firstborn. I want to read a text in Exodus 4.20. Exodus 4.20 just to see whether, whether we can explain this. I hope Exodus 4.20 speaking about Jesus as the firstborn. And he says this. I hope it is the one. And Moses took his wife. No, I think he's not the one. God speaks about Israel as the, is, is the firstborn. I missed the text. But I just wanted us to see how God refers to Israel and calls Israel the firstborn. The language of firstborn has to do with prestige that is the one is the one of greater value and significance. And therefore, as we speak about Jesus, that he is the creator and the firstborn of all creation, it tells us that he is the one who reigns over all He has all the powers. And that's why children of God in explanation we are told that all things you know it says all things in verse 16 all things that have been created and in, in heaven are and in earth the things we see and we don't see you know things we see are the ones we feel things we, we don't see are like things like love you know things we cannot uh, we cannot really understand the bible tells us even thrones and dominions of all this Description are telling us of any imagination. Whatever you can imagine is included in that. That Jesus yes. reigns over them. He's over them all. He stands above them all. He is the one who reigns over any dominion. It doesn't matter what power what principle? Jesus is the greatest. Yes, Hallelujah. Amen. Children of God, praise Amen. God. Amen. You know, people of God, as you hear what it says in verse 16, that everything exists in him. And for him and through him. It means that Jesus is not only the source of our life, but also the 
agent of our life. He is the primary person who plans. He is the instrument that produces. And finally, he is the one we end up with. If everything in creation exists in him, then there is nothing evil that is in him. Hallelujah, people of God. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. I want to tell somebody today, look at verse 17 as we bring this to an end. Look at verse 17 and he says that he is before all things and by him all things consist. Meaning all things are held together by Jesus. Yes. You know, Paul, Paul seems to describe that, that Paul, that Jesus is the architecture. He's the one who builds and is the goal and the ultimate. So, Je Jesus is supreme, but he's also sufficient. He's sufficient. He is the one in whom we find all things. You know, in the morning I was speaking to the young people who gave their lives to God. And I was telling them, I'm so envious of you. Because of what you have decided. Because I didn't get that opportunity. I came to believe in the Lord when I was 26 years old. That's when I began to walk with the Lord. But I know that previously before I began to walk with the Lord, my life was different. And I know that all my, my, my friends at that age are all dead. Are all all dead because of the kind of life that we need. But immediately that I got Jesus, when Jesus became all things to me, when Jesus became sufficient for me, life has been different. I tell my children today, I have children today, unfortunately, that I've never known a pit latrine. Pit, pit latrine. Chome. Majinyuonge. Majinyuorecha. Why? As a pastor with the privileges we have, we've been walking in houses where they have been born in toilets in the house. So when we go home, they become constipated. Because they can't go to toilet until they come back to the house. Then I tell them, you know with us, when I was growing up, sometimes even we didn't have a toilet. I'm telling them the truth. We used to find toilets in the bush. And I tell them now to make the story even more interesting. That sometimes you have to go to the toilet at night. And you don't know where you're going to squat. Sometimes you squat and there's a snake. And they are like, really? They look like I'm a movie. But the thing I want to tell you when we talk about God rescuing us, we are talking about God rescuing us from such. Because of that kind of life, it was sort of a jungle life. We were 12 grandchildren in a home being fed by a grandmother. You can imagine. What kind of a life could you find? Nobody's looking over you. If, if you want to go and smoke, go and smoke and kill. Go and smoke and kill yourself. If you want to drink, go and drink and kill yourself. Nobody will even ask you. The only thing they will ask you is if you have woken up to go and look after the cows. That's all. But how you live your life, it's up to you. So you will go and do everything. You can imagine everything. And that's why we say, 
when Jesus revealed himself to me as a young man and I started to walk with him and I remember my friends telling me that we know you will come back you will come back but the more I trusted in him the sweeter he became it became more sufficient. Children of God, I don't, I don't want to preach myself. All I want to say is that Jesus can be sufficient. We don't need extras in our walk with the Lord, in our growth with Jesus. Jesus is sufficient. Jesus is sufficient. He is the spring. If Jesus is not there, even our homes would not stand. So the Bible says he holds all things together. He is the master of all things. And therefore it's appropriate people of God. As we think about Jesus, I want us to sing. I want us to sing. I want to go away. Song 75. This is a song I want us to bring this way. And all that I want you to live with. Because as I said, I'm limited. It, it's, 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 it's too big. To talk about it, that my Savior Jesus is also my Creator. He is also the one in whom I find sufficiency. That whatever might be that I'm going through, Jesus, you are enough. You are enough. I want that conviction. Even as I preach it, I still feel more. Because I want Jesus to be sufficient. Yes, baby. I want wherever I be. People say that truly Jesus is sufficient. And especially for somebody. For somebody. That you also can say with me. I want us to sing that song. And as we sing that song. This evening. I'm also giving an opportunity. For somebody to make a decision. For Jesus. You are creator the source of your life for Jesus who is also the one who fills all things he is all in all he is the one who makes you to exist and you exist for him not for anything else people of God not even for your child you exist for Jesus Jesus wants you to be all in all remember the reason of this that you may worship him it's only until he is lovely to you that you have tested and seen that he's good then you will be motivated and inspired to grow or else he remains a doctrine to study and you will definitely leave it for, any, for any other philosophy of life but Jesus so yes, is not only a philosophy Jesus is your creator he is the beginning of your life, and he alone should control your life, and, and he alone should satisfy and you. And Nobody else should control you, and, and nothing else should satisfy you your life. Life. Jesus alone. Yes, you can. Let's stand up for this song as I pray that if there is anyone this evening who wants to make Jesus Lord and say yes that wants to say, Jesus, be all sufficient to my life. I want to give you my life. I want you to give you everything. I want you to control my life. If there is someone, as we sing this song, please, I want you to walk in front. It's a lovely song. And I hope it will also awaken somebody. Please, as we sing, come in front. I want to pray.
just to think that God loves me. And I wonder all the time, I wonder all the time, just to think that God loves me. Oh, the basis of our growth when we begin to think of that one that the highly exalted God the creator of all things has zeroed into my life it's a wonder of it all is there anyone this evening that wants to give your life to Jesus give you another moment to pray with you. I want to pray with you. I don't want to keep people standing. But if the spirit of God is nagging you, I don't know what you feel. I don't know what you've been depending on. I don't know how you've been aspiring in your life to grow. But the aspirations we want to have is to grow and be like Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Is there anybody? Come. Be. Anybody who wants to come. I want to pray with you this evening. The Lord has been harvesting. He has harvested a big number in the morning. No, and I still okay. trust that somebody might have come in this evening. You want to be part of that group. I want to pray with you. He is sufficient. Jesus Yes, sufficient. Wrong. Especially for us who are young. As I said, if the Lord can seize us, can you can give him your life, surely you can fulfill your purpose because you are created for him. Anyone as I pray with us, anyone who says even me, let's close our eyes, let's bow down to pray. Heavenly Father, you're so limited, Lord, with words to express the true majesty and glory that is thine, O oh Lord. But we thank you, Holy One of Israel, for thy spirit groans within us to make expressions that we cannot make as we acknowledge that you are highly exalted, Jesus, that you are far above all principalities, powers, and dominions, that you, in you all things consist and are held together. Amen. Holy Father, God of heaven, of this day I pray that, Lord, upon each one of us, through your spirit, give us a glimpse again of your greatness. Give us a glimpse again of your majesty as revealed in one alone who comes out of your bosom, Jesus Christ. For our days, O Lord, today are days of self-interest, but we desire that we shall not seek to grow for our sake, but we desire to grow because we have tested and seen that the Lord is good. O oh God, that you may bring us to that point of worship. That our hearts may continue to melt down. Our hearts may continue to be softened as we experience the true power of your majesty. Thank you for your blessing. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
good news harmonies please come on stage as they come after they are done we will share the grace and leave as they are coming i uh, just want to tell us that our camp is coming to an end <laughs> i don't know when it started and i don't know why it's ending because it just started like yesterday so if you wanted to be blessed with teachings from morning to evening members we only have tomorrow friday will be half day so with this we still want to welcome you that tomorrow you come early in the morning at eight so that we get blessed with the remaining programs and uh, also i want to clearly make this appeal that if you have even offerings in form of uh, items in kind offerings you are free to bring if you have maize if you are doing business and you have items that you sell whatever you have be it in kind or in the form of cash you are welcome to bring them tomorrow uh, and even we'll have time to still bring our offerings to God. So please let's plan to attend tomorrow in the morning as from 8 as we get blessed. Good news, someone is welcome for one final song. Well, <laughs>